hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 3 and today i'm going to be giving you part 10 of what if naruto was the demigod of fire guys remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if naruto found Toborama's secret base guys over anime king 2 and also be sure to go ahead and check out the brand new movie over anime prince of what if godlike naruto went to the one piece universe guys and enjoy that and stay tuned for a brand new episode over anime king if you're new yes i have four channels which i post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy so comment down below and tell me if you're new so i can reply and talk back to all of you guys so without further ado, what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode begin now guys. So the last spot we left off, Jiraiya made sure to inform Naruto that he would be handing over the prisoner within a month time. However, Naruto refused, as Jiraiya told him that he would make him hand her over. But Naruto simply told him to try his best. As Jiraiya ended up getting lured away by a woman, as two people arrived towards Naruto's door and knock, to see that it was none other than Itachi Uchiha, as Naruto told him that he was the one that took that woman away. Remembering her name it was Mikato as Itachi was a bit thrown off. Naruto told him that the woman was nice to him and he killed her. Not to mention she was his own mother and for that he was gonna kill him. But before he could do, Sasuke arrived. Showing up on the scene after hearing what happened at Kanoha. Sasuke went straight after Itachi. As Sasuke had shown impressive improvements. Not only that though, Naruto and Kisame start to fight. As Naruto end up blasting Kisame through the wall. Arrived on the outside, the both of them start to tussle. Kisame soon come to realize that Samehata could not absorb the flames that came from Naruto. It made no sense because he was using chakra, so what the hell was going on? The flames were overpowering Samehata. But Kisame showed that he was not an extra criminal for nothing, as both him and Naruto start to clash. Kisame used Samehata to shear Naruto's chest as blood flew everywhere, but steam started to rise on Naruto's chest as he started to heal. The battle got more intensified as Naruto's body was cloaking nothing but fire. As both of them run towards each other, a brutal session then proceeds to happen. Punches and kicks and smash with blades. Kisame show his title. There was no joke as he was knocking Naruto around. However, Kisame got a smirk on his face because the more he seemed to knock Naruto down, the more powerfully got as Naruto power exploded out of control as he started to burn everything around him. As Naruto smirk as he rushed forward, however, the battle was stopped at Jiraiya having a scene. Kisame told Naruto that he was looking forward towards a battle between them soon enough, once again as he was looking forward to it. As Naruto grinned at him before he proceeded to escape, Sasuke was knocked unconscious but he was able to wound Itachi, a slice on his cheek. Still that was something given how powerful Itachi really was. Guy came as Guy brought Sasuke back home. So with that they proceed to make their way until they found Snelly. Arriving at the location, Snelly was talking about her not coming back to become Hokage when Naruto slapped her across the face. The slap was so surprising as no one expected it. As Naruto told her how disappointed he was, she proceeded to punch him straight through the bar as Naruto crashed. Snelly went outside fuming as Naruto cursed at her, telling her what a disappointment he thought she was. Jiraiya told him who? Her family was and what happened to her while she ran away from the village. She did not deserve the title in his opinion as Naruto told her that he would break her before she ever take that title. The both of them started to fight. Shizune was worried because Snelly Sam was going a bit too hard and Naruto was not dropping no matter what she did. The both of them end up causing an earthquake in the village. As they were ripping and tearing the place apart, the battle became brutal and vicious. 
Jiraiya figured that he had to do something but Snedi ended up punching Naruto so hard that he was knocked out cold. However, she felt the effects of his punches as well, something that surprised her. As her body slowly started to heal, several burn marks over her. However, Naruto words had struck her deep, really deep. Waking up Naruto had gotten back on his feet. Jiraiya was surprised as Snedi was right. Naruto's metabolism to get well back on his feet was immensely fast. Consider what he went through with Kisame and now with her. And yet after a few hours he was back on his feet. Naruto ended up finding Snelly alone. As he sat down there and told her that she was a disappointment. He laid it on thick for her. She did not even speak. As Naruto could not believe that her family was the first and the second as well. Just because two people died she ran away from everything. There was countless people that would have benefited from her being there. Her medical ninjutsu. She was not the only one in this world that lost everything. After all, how do she think they would feel knowing that she had a chance to become what they could not and yet she turned it down? He scoffed at her as he was so disappointed. As he turned to walk away, Naruto words were very conflicting to her. As for Teiwaya, she was stuck. As Naruto's punishment to her was not showing up. She was stuck in here as she couldn't take it anymore. It was becoming harder day in and day out. Yes, he was still feeding her but she was starting to lose her mind in here. So that is what his punishment was not showing up at all. The day came as Shizune was passed out on Naruto's ground. Snedi Sama had decided to go to Urchimaru. Shizune was about to warn them, but she was knocked out by Snedi. As Jiraiya was taken to a bar by Snedi last night, and she drugged his drink, and now he was not in a condition to fight. So they proceeded to make their way after her. Arriving on the scene, she was shaking on the ground as Naruto asked what was wrong with her. It turns out that she was afraid of blood. Another reason why Naruto was disappointed in her. How could she be a damn medic and afraid of blood? As for Teiwaya, Naruto told Orochimaru that he had his subordinates. Orochimaru told him that if she was weak enough to get captured, she was no longer a subordinate of his. A waste of space would she be dead by now, after all. He applored Naruto to go ahead and kill her. Teiwaya was shaken. She knew that Orochimaru only saw her as a pawn, but she at least thought that he would fight to get her back, but in his eyes she was nothing but a worthless, discarded tool. And that further broke her, she gave up. No longer seen fit to continue on. She had no more family left in this world and no one else. So she didn't have a point of living anymore. She gave up completely. As Naruto made sure that she heard everything Urchimaru said. Before he went after Kabuto. Naruto had put Kabuto into a critical condition. Urchimaru made a snake swallow him to get him out of here. While Kabuto was able to cut Naruto's heartstring. As Naruto was dying. Snedi was able to snap out of her stupor as she rushed towards him. As she started to heal him until she found something, he was not dying. She could feel an energy source inside of him. As for Naruto, he met a strange man. The man's skin was red. He had crimson hair that was white at the end. As he had four arms. As both him and the man was filling with power. As the man raised his fist and told him that their flames cannot be extinguished. As Naruto bumped fist with him. Naruto woke up in the real world. As he looked towards Snedi as he saw her going up against Urchimaru. Her confidence, her determination as that brought a smirk to his face. As Naruto leaped forward jumping in front of her. She was shocked to see that he was awake nevertheless on his feet. As Naruto empowered all the power into his fist before bringing it down. Urchimaru had to leave as the entire place went up in a gigantic explosion almost swallowing him. When he got back to his base. Kabuto only had a 50-50% chance of surviving and dying as well. Naruto had really messed him up badly. As Urchimaru got to work on saving Kabuto, he was still loyal to him and he still needed him. As for Snedi, she agreed. When Naruto woke up back after overdoing it, Naruto went inside Hellhound as he told Tiawai that she would be working for him now. Despite her not agreeing, she did not see anywhere else that she could go. And she was too tired to fight back as Naruto brought her out, back into the real world. Snedi was shocked to hear that he really had someone locked away. So yeah guys, basically let's be left off. If you guys can switch across the place to yourself. So as we jump right into this new episode again. Now guys. Never in her life could she thought a shower would feel this good. Maybe it was because she spent the last month locked up in a humid place. And she never got to shower. As she felt the warm water rush through her hair. She stood under the shower as it ran down her body. Her right hair sticking to her skin. She's been in the shower for about 45 minutes now. Washing herself off. 
It was none other than Tay Wire. That bastard had just freed her from her confinement. Her first thought was to escape, but there were some problems there. For one, she didn't have anywhere else to go. Orochimar said to himself, he would kill her if she showed up again because she had proven beyond worthless to get captured. So she couldn't go back there. And another thing, she was too weak to fight back. Granted he fed her, however, she was not in a state where she could fight at the moment. And the other thing, he was stronger than her. And not to mention there was also two other Sonins and another woman there. She doubted that she could fight them off. She would be slaughtered if she tried. And a part of her mind was telling her to accept the deal, to become his subordinate. But as she thought about it, she was one of the few that attacked Kanoha. Would they really allow her to just go on like that? This kid did find the new Hokage, but did he have that sway to make her, well, be pardoned from her crimes? Granted, she did not fight anyone outright, but she was one of the few that held the barrier up in order to capture the third Okage. She released a sigh, it didn't matter anymore. While she was confined in his little trap, she had gave up on life, as she thought that she was going to die anyway. So just surviving was something better than being left there to dry out and die. She didn't know, she would just have to see where everything takes her. That is when she heard, you can't expect her to wear that. She glanced towards the door. It was that other woman that was with the Hokage. She wondered what was going on. In the living room of the hotel that they were in, as Shizune looked towards Naruto with a disapproving stare. Why not, said Naruto. She's my subordinate, I can tell her to wear whatever I want. First off, said Shizune, even if she's now your subordinate, she said, with ear quotes, not believing that. You can't expect any girl in your right mind to wear something like that. Are you crazy, she asked. As Naruto looked at her, of course not. I'm perfectly sane, said Naruto, and this is what she will wear. Alright, fine, say what you believe, but I'm telling you, she's not gonna wear that, and I won't let you force her. She may have once served under Urchimaru, but after Lady Snare they was able to cool down, she's able to see the, all the benefits of having this girl on her side. To find out more about the snake Sani, she said, before Naruto could speak, the door opened up. As Tewai came out as she was wrapped in a towel, there was another one on her head, covering her hair. As she looked towards the two of them standing there, before her eyes trailed down towards the clothes that was laid out. She looked back up towards Naruto and towards Shizune, who seemed to have an apologetic look on her face. She then turned back towards Naruto. She looked around before she picked up a lamp and threw it, as Naruto caught it in his hand, before he placed it down. Who the hell do you expect to wear that, she asked. You, said Naruto, as he walked over towards the clothing that he had purchased at the store, seeing nothing wrong with it, even though the shopkeeper was looking at him strange when he had purchased this and said that it was for one of his new subordinates. The woman had looked towards him strangely. The clothing that Naruto had purchased after burning Tewaya, old clothing, was a red skirt. However, these type of clothing did not seem to be an outward clothing. This was something more fitting for the bedroom because the skirt was not hiding literally anything at all. It was insanely short. Not to mention, the crop top that he bought had a circle hole right in the center that exposed one's chest. And it also had strappings that came down together. Yes, this clothes was definitely for the bedroom. For a woman to entice her male lover. Do you think I'm some kind of prostitute or slut or something, said Tiawaya. What? Of course not, said Naruto. Why would you say that? Then why the hell did you bought that? And why did you burn my clothes in the first place? They could have been washed. They smell too bad, said Naruto. And whose fault is that? You locked me up in that goddamn place for a month. As she picked up the table, a lamp was on and threw it towards him. As Naruto caught it and put it down. As your superior, you're going to have to learn to stop throwing things at me. You're not my superior. And you're not in control of me, she yelled. I never agreed to anything that you had to say. Disapprove as you like, said Naruto. You work for me now. The door opened up as they came in the room. As she looked between the three of them, what's going on, she asked. Naruto here thought it was right 
to make Tay Wire wear this. As Shizune picked up the clothing, showing it off to Snelly. Snelly turned towards Naruto. As she gave him a strange look. You see, she likes it, said Naruto. Thinking that that look meant that she liked it. I know, said Naruto. I'll purchase an outfit for you as well. However, in a bigger size. You seem to be a lot bigger. Especially the chest area, said Naruto. After all, compared to hers, those things are... Naruto never got to finish the sentence. As Snelly opened the door while he was talking before she proceeded to punch him right through. As he was sent sailing. Tch, serves him right, said Tewai. You. Tewai turned towards Snelly. Unlike the others, this was someone that she was actually a bit afraid of. After all, she was going to be the Okage. She can bring her up on charges of assisting in killing the third Okage. And she can be executed. However, the woman did not show any sign of that. They had only spoke for five minutes as she told her that she would have to work for the Hidden Leaf and provide information if she was going to stay alive. Snelly made it clear what was going to happen if she refused her. Tewai had instantly agreed. Orochimar didn't care one damn about her. It was going to be rough out on her own as she had seen the world for herself outside. And it would be only a matter of time if Orochimar knew that she was out and about. He would send his forces to hunt her down. She had no doubt that if the others were told to kill her, they would end her life in a second without hesitation. So she agreed to the woman. However, not even Snedek can call Naruto off. As long as Naruto said that she was his subordinate, well, not even Snedek, it seems, a new Hokage can call him off. We'll get you some new clothing. Shizune, if you don't mind. As Shizune nodded, until she returned, let us have a little chat, shall we? As Snedi sat down, Tewai sitting down as well as she was still wrapped in a towel. As for Naruto, he would have come back instantly and tried to fight Snedi. However, Naruto had more respect for her now when she was going to be the new Hokage. But that was not all of it though. While Naruto was on the verge of dying, some would say. But he was not really dying. Instead, he was actually growing more. Naruto had vague memories of meeting a person with four arms. As he wondered who the hell was that. However, since Naruto had that memory, he now had a new thought in his mind. Of bringing his flames down to a controllable level. All of that power brought down. As Naruto stood in front of a tree. He held his finger up. There was no steam, no fire coming from it. Because Naruto kept the flames inside his body. Well, all inside his finger. As Naruto then proceeded to bring it forward. Naruto poked his finger in the tree. For a moment, nothing happened until all of the powers released. The back of the bark started to crack before it exploded outwards. Not as violent as you would like, but still. A tree was not compared to a human body, so this was still impressive. As there was a grin on Naruto's face. When Naruto finally returned back to the hotel, he saw Tewaya as she was dressed differently. She was in a red dress that had a slit right at the waist going down. Black shorts on their knees. There was a white obi tied around her waist. And she was wearing black and red sandals. Her hair was tied up as she was wearing a white cap on her head. As the front part of the cap allowed her right here to come down in the middle of her face. Going down towards her nose and leaning to the side. The rest going down into her back. When is this thing gonna come off she said. As there was a seal placed in her arm. Courtesy of Jiraiya, a tracking seal and a chalker suppression seal. She could not use her chakra how she like. The pervert told me was to make sure that you don't escape. Or try to attack one of us. So we would have to hurt you, said Naruto. Me especially since I had you locked up for a month. But I don't see the big deal, said Naruto. After all, I do trust you. Tewai looked at him surprised. Why the hell would you would? Are you some kind of naive shithead, she asked. Naive shithead, said Naruto tilting his head. Just because I said I trust you, I am naive shithead. You should not trust anyone in this world. You're a ninja. You should know that by now, especially someone that worked for the enemy. Well, formally, said Naruto, that's one thing. And it's quite easy to say what I said because I don't believe that you're stupid or naive. To trust Urchumar once again after you heard what he said. I mean, he called you a worthless tool that should be killed. He even told me to go ahead and end your existence because you're nothing more to him. Are you saying that you would go back to someone like that, said Naruto? 
That caused her to look to the side, however, Naruto grabbed her by the face, surprising her, as he made her look right back at him. You're loyal, said Naruto, and you're also afraid, despite you covering it up by your cursing and your bad attitude and acting all bitchy. She started to glare at him. However, the person that you thought was going to actually fought for you and bring you back to your, well, normal life, normal in your own terms, just told you to basically go to hell, even after all these years of you serving him and giving him everything you got. The scowl quickly vanished off her face. Despite him holding her, she did not try to retaliate. However, that's him, and this is me. I am Naruto Uzumaki, said Naruto, as he looked directly in her eyes. And from this day on, you will be my subordinate and you will work for me. And unlike that snake bastard, I will fight and kill for my subordinates. That loyalty that you have for him, turn it up on me and you will never be left alone ever again. Do you understand me? T.Y. looked at him as she looked into his eyes, before her right fist came up and punched him across the face. As Naruto barely even moved, I'm still pissed that you locked me up in that place for a month, she said, and I'll get my revenge. As Naruto simply chuckled at that, I will expect nothing less from a subordinate of mine, after all. If I am going to have a subordinate, I don't want an idiotic stupid person. I want someone to challenge me, someone that can keep up with me, and you. Or that person. Now prepare yourself. We're heading off to Kanoha. Wait. As Naruto stopped and glanced towards her, she did not make eye contact with him as she looked away. Do you really think they would allow someone like me in Kanoha? I mean, I was with Urchimaru. I was a part of the barrier team. <laughs> I'm pretty sure once I step foot in the village, they will kill me. You have the Hokage on your side, said Naruto. Why would you think of that? Yes, yeah, she might be the Hokage, but rules are rules, aren't they? I assist in the third Hokage's death. Despite not landing the blow or doing anything, I help Urchimaru cause his death. Do you really think I will be allowed to live if I step foot in Kanoha? Well, I respect the old woman now, said Naruto, and I believe that she will keep her word. And I doubt any of them can make her do what she doesn't want to do. And besides, if they try to do anything to you, they will have to go through me first. T.Y. laugh. Tch, you stupid shithead, she said. Do you really expect me to believe that you would fight your own friends for someone you barely know? As Naruto laughed instead, listen to me and listen to me good. When I say something, I do not go back on my word. So listen to me now. If anyone try to attack my subordinate while we're in Kanoha, I will personally dish out insane painful punishment. So there's nothing for you to worry about. I will make this clear to everyone else. Now as I said, get ready. As he started to walk away, she watched him leave. As she was finding it hard to believe that he would actually stand up for someone like her. T.Y. did not know how to express these kinds of emotions. After all, at the land of sound, everyone was looking out for themselves. Anyone would do anything to throw you under the bush as long as they don't get in trouble. Ninjas of the sound would speak to you kindly one day and then next day kill you without even blinking. That is how they were there and she was one of those people as well. And yet, now she was getting this kind treatment from someone that she barely knew. Well, she has been with him for the past month but still, it was just... She didn't know how to express these things and it was driving her crazy. Why the hell was he doing this? And she frowned herself. Time skip. Ice and Kitetsu were bored. Yes, they were bored. The reconstruction of the village was going well. But they were bored. Gate duty was probably the boringest thing to ever do. As the both of them were playing cards, trying to pass the time. That is when Aizumo noticed people coming ahead. As he glanced up. Whoa. You won't believe this, he said. What is it, said Kitetsu as he glanced up? To see none other than the legendary Sanins. Naruto, with a red-headed girl beside him. And Shizune as well. Snedesama, Aizumo said in surprise. She's here. Wait, then does that mean... As they looked towards one another. So you two are still here, huh, said Naruto. 
as the both of them looked down towards him. I left you guys here when I left and come back to see you here. Isn't this job boring? Well, can't say wrong, Isimo said, but someone has to do it. Well, both of your lives surely suck. I just went on an adventure and faced off against Orochimaru myself and his apprentice that I almost killed. And yet you two are here doing gate duty. Well, I'm not surprised, said Naruto. The background character must always remain in the back while the main character let me go out and explore adventures. And what do you mean by that, said Kitetsu? Oh, it's quite simple, said Naruto. As he then proceeded to explain to them that he was the host of the Nine Tails, not to mention, he was already ridiculously powerful for his age, stronger than them by at least ten folds. Not to mention he's been on missions that he could only dream of, and they would spend the rest of their life in the shadows while he would make his name something that would be spread across the elemental nation. Tay couldn't help but laugh as she saw, look on the Chunin's faces. As Naruto crushed their hopes and dreams, right there and then. Well, he really does know what to let none think, doesn't he? Said Snevi. And you want to know something, said Jiraiya. He meant no disrespect by what he's saying. How can he mean no disrespect? Just look at him. To him, what he's saying is just the truth. The more you get to know him, the more you'll realize that he has no filter at all. Yes, I've noticed, said Snevi. Well, see you guys, said Naruto as he walked off, leaving the two gate guards to sulk in their now misery. You know, it's not good to be damning the spirit of your fellow shinobis. I'm just telling them the truth, said Naruto. Maybe it will motivate them to get off their lazy asses and train to become something better. They're doing a great service for the village, said Snevi. They're watching the gates. Tch, that's the most boringest job to ever exist. Keep talking like that. And I'll place you on gate guard duty for a month. Oh, you wouldn't do that, said Naruto. And why not? Well, that's pretty simple, said Naruto. You enjoy. Sake. There's no doubt that you're gonna have to drink a lot when you're doing paperwork. I've seen the old man smoke a lot. Because paperwork is really stressful. So if you do put me on gate guard duty, I'll find all of your sakes and smash the bottles. Snare the grit your teeth and I'll just have the envoys lock you up. Until I see fit to release you from prison. Huh. <laughs> You think a prison can hold me, said Naruto. It seems you haven't learned. Now look here, you brat, she said. I'm the one in charge now, so you better show me some damn respect. I do respect you, said Naruto. Otherwise, you would not be walking in here and taking the title. Even if you did not, you couldn't have stopped me from taking the title. Oh, you think I could not, said Naruto as his fingers started twitch. As steam started to rise from his hand, snare the clencher face as the veins start to pop on it. Okay, okay, you two, said Jiraiya. I think it's best both of them turn, throwing their fists in the process. Jiraiya was sent sailing back through the gates and skipping along. T.Y. could only laugh as she was finding all of this so amusing. As Naruto started to laugh as well. He talks too much, said Naruto. Well, I guess you're right there. But you better understand your place, brat, she said with a confident smirk. I'm your Hokage now. Disrespect me. And I'll give you nothing but D-rank missions. And you will never drink another taste of sake in your life, said Naruto. As the both of them start to argue once again, Shizune could only sigh, but there was a happy smile on her face. She could tell that Lady Snether was happy. Despite being in the village as she promised that she would never come back to, she was happy with arguing with Naruto. It seemed to bring her a great joy. As Naruto seemed to be happy as well, the both of their fiery attitudes were clashing and yet it made them happy. T.Y. glanced around and she took a deep breath. Well, I guess this is a new start, she thought to herself. Time skip. Jiray was able to return with them. He decided that whenever they're fighting, he's never going to interrupt ever again. As they made their way towards the office building, arriving there, the three elders are already there. Donzo Shimura, Homura, and Koharu. The moment they saw Snandi, Homura was the first one to speak. I'm glad to see that your mission was a success. As Koharu spoke next, Snade, we're glad that you've returned and decided to take up the mantle off, being the Hokage. Donzo said nothing as he was just here to, well, observe. However, he did notice a red head. Homura then noticed her next. As his gaze narrowed, they had a listing, a file, 
on the members that assess with Orochimaru, the Anvus were able to give a complete recollection of what happened. And this girl was one of them. Immediately, Koharu called for the Anvus. With no active Hokage, they were the ones that were keeping everything under control. Immediately, four Anvus arrived in the room and stayed while I was surrounded. As she realized that she was trapped, she figured that this might happen. Not having proper use over her chakra or having her flute, she knew that she was screwed. All of them holding on to weapons. Just as she thought. When the time really came to it, she was all alone. And she would be judged for her actions. As she expected nothing less but death. Well, after they grilled her for information. That was until all four Anvus had to jump away. As they were almost burned in a small space. As Donzo stepped to the side as well. Him almost getting caught up in a fire. As Naruto stepped forward. All of you stand down he said. She's with me. The elders looked towards him. And what the hell is that supposed to mean Koharu said. Wondering what this child was bluffing about. This girl right here she's a suspect. She's one of the few that help Orochimaru with the attack on our third Okage. She will be sent to prison immediately and await her trial. And the next time you decide to interrupt with an official arrest, you will be punished as well. As Teiwaya saw Naruto went quiet, just as she expected. However, who the hell are you, said Naruto. Kaharu was shocked. Are you speaking to me? Yes. I'm wondering who the hell are you to think you can tell me what to do. Interrupting with arrest. If you haven't gotten through your thick skull, she's with me. She's my subordinate. If any of you touch her, I'll burn you alive, said Naruto. Such disrespect, Hamura said. Do you know who you're speaking to, child? Yes. Two old farts that think they can tell me what to do. From the last time I checked, you guys aren't the Hokage. And given how old and wrinkled you two both are, I don't see you two being shinobis. And I've never seen you participate in any kinds of shinobi affair. So that means you're just some waste of space believing that you can tell me, Naruto Uzumaki, what to do. So let me make this straight to the both of you, said Naruto. She's with me. Go after her. And I'll be there to put you in your place. The both of them turned towards Snedi to have her address this kind of disrespect. However, Snedi was smirking, which surprised the both of them. Before she cleared her throat, Naruto, she said, These two are the teammates of Hiruz and Sertobi, elders of this village and a part of the council. As Naruto looked towards her, And why should I care if they are that title, said Naruto. I don't know these people. If they were so important, if they were members of his team, where were they when the attack was going on Kanoha? Where were they when the giant one tailed beast decided to turn Kanoha into ash? Well, they weren't anywhere to be seen, but I was out there fighting that damn thing, and I took it down. So to me your title means absolute garbage, said Naruto. As far as I'm concerned, you too should go to a retirement home. As Naruto grabbed T.Y. by the hand, who was completely shocked. She couldn't even utter a single word. Now come on, let's go. We'll talk soon, Bachan, said Naruto. As Naruto left the room before anyone could protest. Are you really gone alone to get away with this, Homura asked, looking towards Nevi. Well, I'm not exactly Hokage yet. And I doubt you two would want to file a report on his misbehaving. Or to get him in any trouble. Why not, Kaharu said. Well, as far as I can see, He's a crucial asset to this village. Not only does he possess the nine tails, even without it, his strength is beyond phenomenal. Even able to go against me in a fight. So I doubt you two would want to go up against him. As she smirked a bit, this is not a joke. His manners must be adjusted. Yes, and I will talk to him about that. However, if you two would have listened before you had jumped on that girl and even summoned Anvus. She had offered to give us all the information she can on Urchimaru for asylum in this village. And I've worked with a deal with her. But she was a part of the group that Urchimaru used to kill the third Akagi. How can you really trust her? We've been monitoring her for one month now. Despite Snedei being unaware of Naruto having Tewaya, she decided to just go with it. So believe me when I say, allowing her asylum will be a great information benefit for Kanoha. Not to mention she's not completely free. Jiraiya, made sure of that. 
We have a track on her the entire time, not to mention. She cannot utilize her chakra as she feel. And I've set Naruto as her personal guard to watch over her. That still does not explain his disrespect towards us. Well, you did question him about his job that he got from the Hokage. Or soon to be, if I must say, said Snelly. The elders were not liking this in the slightest. Donzo remained quiet throughout all of this. As he proceeded to make his leave, Snelly watched the man with careful eyes. She knew that that man was corrupt, and there was no doubt that he wanted this position, as Jerry watched him leave as well. The other two were still pissed off about Naruto's attitude towards them. He should not be able to get away with things like that. However, who were they? Yes, they were elders, but the Hokage seemed to have the boy in high favors right now. As they were pissed off by that, but they did not say anything about it, just telling her to speak to him about his attitude. Wanting this to be done with, Snelly agreed. Meanwhile, Tewaya was still stunned. From what she could see, whoever those two people were, they were high up in the food chain seeing that they could summon Anvus. And yet, the disrespect that he showed them, not to mention outright attacking Anvus. Naruto was still holding her hand, dragging her along. He was saying something but she wasn't really paying attention, she was so lost in her thoughts. She was feeling these strange odd feelings that she never felt before. And they were affecting her. They then came to a stop as she glanced up. A gigantic building is in front of her. She glanced towards him. And this is my home, said Naruto. Wait, you own this place? Yes, said Naruto. All of it, she asked. As she looked at the giant building, as Naruto nodded his head. So, you're rich. As Naruto merely shrugged. Yeah, you can say that, he said. As he made his way inside, her following behind him. She was speechless at the sight that she saw. It was a lot. As they made their way and went up towards the fourth level. And that was Anko room. The seals that were wired into the building if intruders were to enter. Were not going to alert that Naruto enter because well. His blood was tied into the system. Anko had no idea when Naruto would be returning. However. She and Kimiko got a bit restless. The last time they were spotted together, the boat girls were sleeping together. Anko was not fully into girls, but, well, she was by curious. And Kimiko, well, she could go both ways. And since then, the both of them has been sleeping one another. As the mood had struck them today, they didn't even lock the door. As Naruto stepped inside, seeing clothing all around. As boat girls were on the couch. The table was a mess as they started over there, then they had dropped to the ground. As they rolled all the way over here, the boat girls were as naked as the day they were born, lying on top of each other, their bodies dripping with sweat. Immediately, T.Y. eyes widened, not expecting this in the slightest. Kimiko screamed as she saw the boat of them there. As Uncle turned around, not expecting them in the slightest, well, Naruto that is. As Naruto raised the eyebrow and confused by this sight. However, he simply stepped back out and took Tewa's hand. As he brought her up to the top level. Usually, she wouldn't let someone be holding her hand like this or carrying her along. However, she did not feel like it was that bad. And she was letting him get away with it for now. Or are we going to talk about what just happened, said Tewa. Naruto said nothing as he kept on walking. Back in the room, Kimiko looked towards Anko. As Anko looked towards her, both girls not sure what to say. It's not like anything was wrong. They were both adults, doing what they find pleasurable. So why did they feel so guilty? Was it because Naruto did not say anything and just walk away? Arriving towards the final level, Tewaya saw Naruto's room. As he had brought down the back wall to the other one, making the whole space his. She saw a lot of equipment, focused on gaining strength. He had a gigantic fridge, like massive. As he had a big, humongous bed, king size. There were several things on his wall. Portraits of fire, burning bushes, strange burning objects. Everything consists of something burning. He also had a giant television. For someone like him, she never expected him to live in a place like this, given his overall attitude. 
You want something to drink, said Naruto. Sure, she said. Her throat did feel a bit parched. As Naruto brought her a can. Soda. As she's never seen a type like this before. What the hell is this, she said. It's not that she hasn't seen a can soda about this type. There was a flaming head on it. It will boost your energy, said Naruto. It's an energy drink. A supplier came to Kanoha every now and then. And I have him dropped by a few shipments. You know. Your living era is not what I would expect given your whole demeanor, said Tewaya. I thought you would live in a crap fest. Something much, much smaller than this. And yet, well, I'm surprised. As she looked around, checking out the gigantic place. It wasn't long before there was a knock on the door. As Uncle and Kimiko arrived, Tewaya had went to the bathroom. As Naruto was standing there, Drinking one of his energy sodas as he was sitting on the couch. Both girls looked towards him as he watched as he looked back towards them. Uncle was the first to speak as she released a sigh. I'm not going to explain myself to you brat he said. You know what you saw. I hope you don't have a problem with it. Uncle Kimiko said. As Uncle said that she would handle it but Kimiko didn't want her to just handle it this way. Naruto was like a little brother to Kimiko. After all, she's known him since he was a very very small child and helped him with his finances. If it wasn't for him, her life wouldn't be so much better than it was. The things that he had helped her with, she was grateful. As Naruto looked towards the two of them, why did you two come up here? Kimiko thought that he was angry but why would he? I stepped out of the room so you would have your time together as a couple. And yet you follow me all the way up here. Wait. You stepped out because you want to give us alone time, said Uncle. Yes, yeah, said Naruto. Or did you want me to interrupt or something? No, it's not that, it's just... Kimiko spoke up. You were just quiet and you just left. So me being quiet is a bad thing. Well, for you, yes. Given who you are. What's that supposed to mean, said Naruto. Kimiko laughed. Nothing, she said. But I'm surprised that neither of you told me what was going on, said Naruto. But what you do with your bodies is not really my problem. As long as it doesn't mess up my business, it's fine, said Naruto. As he started to drink. Well, good to hear. By the way, who was that girl? Is she a new girlfriend, Kimiko asked. No, said Naruto. She is my subordinate, though. Your subordinate. Who is she, said Uncle. She was formerly Orochimaru, subordinate that I kidnapped during the invasion. Wait. So when you said that you had a prisoner locked away, you weren't joking, Uncle said. Nope, said Naruto. Naruto. Uncle stepped forward. This is, it's alright, said Naruto. The Hokage knows about this. Hokage? We don't have a new Hokage yet, Naruto, said Kimiko. Oh, my mission. That is what I went to do. She's named Snedi Senju. Snedisama? She's here? She's in new Hokage? As the boat girls were surprised. They never had a female Hokage before. Hmm. Well, this looks good. So she knows about this new prisoner of yours. Yes, I was set to watch her, said Naruto. And you're just gonna allow her to do as she please? Kimiko said afraid, thinking that this... As Naruto waved her off, there's nothing to fear. She's working for me now. I am not working for you. As the door opened up as Tewai stepped out, drying her hands. I told you this before. I do not work for you. You're just watching me for the time being, under the Hokage orders. Say what you believe, said Naruto, but it will not change. You work for me and that is that. Tewai wanted to throw something at him. But she just sighed and walked and sat down. For once she did not feel her temper flared up. Oh, by the way. This is Tewaya, said Naruto, looking towards Uncle and Kimiko. This is Uncle and this is Kimiko. You three will get along, like sisters. Who the hell are you to tell me to get along with who? I don't know, Uncle said. She's not wrong, said Tewaya. You cannot tell me what to do. I said you will get along like sisters, and that is final, said Naruto, as he crossed his arms. Kimiko sighed, knowing how Naruto was. He was someone that expected everything to go his way. And if it did not, he liked to burn everything around him. As she shook her head, 
Over the years, he had burned a lot of things, and including even people when they did not do as he say. Well, that was people that was trying to interfere with his business. As there was a few punks that believed that they could interfere with Naruto buildings that he bought with Kanoha. But he made sure to put them in their place. And since then, those guys have been working for him. Well, they were afraid to go against him otherwise. However, he do pay them, so that was a good thing. Even if Uncle tried to fight him to make sure that he would not do and put any rules on her. He wasn't above fighting her back. He hit anyone, literally anyone. He has grown into a rather violent, powerful person, but to her, he was just the same little Naruto. As she remembered the first day that she met him, when he simply walked into the place, as he was curious. That was the brothel house as he was asking so many questions. She was shocked to see a kid in there. As she was the one that decided to get him out of there, and she spoke to him, and things just advanced from there on. As Kimiko started to chuckle, causing Uncle to look towards her. What's so funny? This brat believes that he can do what he wants. And I can, said Naruto as he drank this juice and threw the can at Uncle. Uncle slapped it away. Alright, that's it, she said, as she leaped forward as he started to fight. As Tay got up and watched the both of them brawl. Huh. There's some damn crazy people, aren't they? She said. Oh, you don't know the half of it, said Kimiko. Time skip. Two months has passed since Nadia became the Hokage. In order to keep Tewaya in, well, safe havens, the information about her being the ex-subordinate of Urchmar was not revealed to the populace. After all, many people might be threatened to do something stupid, and then Naruto would do something that would cause chaos amongst the village. There was only three people that knew, and that was Homura, Koharu, and Danzo. They were there the day that she was brought into the village. Snedi made sure to warn them that this information must not be leaked to anyone, as they would be the ones held responsible, so the information was not brought loose. The Anvus were the only ones that were watching the battle between the third and Orochimaru, so they were the only ones that saw Tewaya, and they knew better than to open their mouth to anyone else. So as far as the rest of the people were well notified, that being Ruta friends, Tewaya was just someone that Naruto was looking after for the time being. In the months that passed, she had held true to her word and gave Snedi every piece of information she had on Urchimaru. Despite her being Urchimaru's main guard, Urchimaru did not trust her or the other Stone 4 members with everything. The only person that might knew everything about the Sunning was Kabuto. Only thing she knew about was a few bases. However, she was certain by now Urchimaru had moved from them. She told them that Urchimaru had bases all over the nation, in every possible nation, in order for him to keep moving around. However, Jaya had moved out to investigate these bases that she had told him about. Over the past months, he had went there and she was right. Urchimaru made sure to remove every single of his forces from the bases that Tewaya knew about. He knew that Kanoha would stop at nothing to get information on him. So that is why he decided to get rid of them all. Naruto had reunited with Sasuke as Sasuke had finally got the chance to go up against Itachi. But he was still not strong enough to face him. That is why the both of them started to train together once again. With Sasuke now possessing the three totem Sharingan, their training was more intense. They brought in another member as well, and that was Rock Lee. To train in Taijutsu, Rock Lee had learned a lot from his master, Mike Guy. So the three will end up training a lot together as over the past month Sasuke strength has skyrocketed as Naruto and Lee had only gotten stronger as well. Naruto also see fit to train Taiwai as well. She was not one that really relied on Taijutsu. So for the past few months her body has been sore. She cursed so much that her voice was almost going away. As Naruto had taken it fit to pummel her until she was unable to move. As it was going to help her build strength. Not to mention the seals that were placed in her body. After months had passed, Jiraiya had relinquished a seal on her. That was a chakra seal. She still had the tracking seal on though to make sure. Despite her showing that she was not going to betray the village. However, she has been getting stronger for the past couple of months. At first, her and uncle was, well, not really getting along. Well, maybe it was because of Naruto forcing that they were going to get along, but still. Uncle was able to see the mark on her. 
That is when T.Y. told her story. It was because of them drinking sick. Both girls were at the house drinking sick and she told her story. The village where she once lived with her parents. Well, it was burned down to the ground. People were killed and slaughtered right in front of her eyes. She didn't see her father die, but her mother. Her mother was stabbed right through the chest of the kunai. It was war. The small village that she lived in had no forces to fight back against the raiding forces and they were wiped out. It was a good thing that the snake son was passing through at that very moment. Oruchimaru had slaughtered the five guys that wanted to take T.Y. with them. From there on she didn't have anyone else. He promised to give her a good home and he told her that this will never happen to her again if she come with him and swore loyalty to him. She told him that it was her drunken stupor while she told him all of that. After all, she didn't like to reveal emotions. But still, she did tell them everything. After all of that to be betrayed by Urchimaru. Well, it hurt but she would not say that out loud. As Naruto promised her, just like how he promised the third that he would find the sneak and make him regret for betraying her. As Teiwaya simply laughed at that, she knew that he was strong but Urchimaru was still stronger and he was scary as well. However, Naruto simply grinned at her believing that he could not kill the snake Sanin as he told her in due time. She also told the Hokage that Orochimaru was interested in Sasuke. They all already knew that and know that Teiwaya possessed the curse mark. However, her curse mark was far more advanced than Sasuke given the fact that she was able to ascend to another level completely while Sasuke was stuck at the first level. Not even Anko could ascend to the next level while Anko didn't really use the mark, neither did Sasuke. However, T.O.I. told them that Orochimaru time had probably passed for him to take over Sasuke's body. Not to mention, he would want Sasuke to mature. That meant, if he was going to take Sasuke in, he would have trained him to the best of his ability. Hearing that Sasuke was intrigued. Granted, Sasuke didn't want to become a traitor to his home, but Orochimaru was someone that could help him get stronger quickly. The man would train him in brutal ways. Things that Kano Hashinobis would not do. However, Sasuke would not actively betray the Hidden Leaf. His conviction over the years and not to mention the help with Naruto, telling him to not accept help from traitors. However, their Sanin was not reaching anywhere close to find Urchimaru. And as long as Urchimaru was alive, Teiwaya had a target on her head. Every sound Shinobi wanted her dead. If she was ever spotted by one, well, they would actively try and kill her, even her former teammates as well. At the moment though Sasuke was standing in the Uchiha compound. His recent fight with Itachi had him thinking back a lot. It was strange. Itachi seemed proud. Sasuke did not know if he was proud because he was growing in strength. If that was the only reason but he just seemed so proud like he was happy that Sasuke was growing. And when he was running away, Sasuke saw a faint smile on his lips with nothing but happiness. Sasuke couldn't understand why. As he was thinking though, Sasuke felt something as he turned. As he noticed shadows moving around. Before he could even do anything, he was surrounded. Four people surrounded him in a flash. Glancing towards his life, he saw a silver here boy. That looked like he was wearing lipstick. There was a fat one with orange hair. And there was a black hair boy with four arms. And there was also a woman. Blue hair, red lipstick and dark eyes. As she was wearing a green kimono. With a flower pattern on it. The four of them narrowed their eyes towards Sasuke before. They rushed forward to attack him as Sasuke would jump by all four of them. Sasuke was strong but he was not able to face all of them. Including that woman, her name was Gurin, and she was far stronger than any of the Sound 4 members. They knocked him out. However, what they weren't expecting was to see a pinker girl as they were leaving the compound. It was none other than Sakura. Within Naruto's absence, Sakura and Sasuke went on several more missions with different members of Kanoha. Not to mention, the two of them had grown a bit more closer. That is why Sakura took her chance. She asked Sasuke if he wanted to get something to eat, and that was tonight. At first Sasuke was going to turn her down, however, he decided to accept. 
Sasuke told her to meet him here. But what Sakura saw was the unconscious Sasuke being taken out by a guy with orange hair. He was large. Immediately Sakura shouted at them. Their attention was drawn towards her. The girl. Immediately a blade came on her hand. Before Sakura could even register what was going on, the woman sped in front of her. Sakura stepped back as fast as she could, but she was sliced across the arm. As she had brought it up, if it wasn't for her arm, her throat would have been sliced. Sakura tried to jump, but she was kicked out of mid-ear as she slammed into the ground. Gorin brought the blade up as she stabbed it down with Sakura roll. It missed her by an inch. Sakura got up as she started casting in Jutsu on the girl. However, Gorin was easily able to break out of it. As Sakura decided to use one of her more powerful Genjutsu until something split right in her stomach. She looked down as she could see an arrow protruding through her stomach and her back. Blood was pouring down the wound. Slam! Another one went through her shoulder as it pinned her to the wall. Slam! Another one went through her other shoulder. Now she's like a perfect target, said Kitamaru. As there was a smirk on his face, Gorin extended a crystal on her arm as she was about to slit Sakura's throat. That is when she heard voices. Shit, she thought. Move. As they quickly got out of there. Around two minutes later, a group of passing by ninjas came across a girl pinned to the wall bleeding out unconscious. It was a good thing that one of them studied medical ninjutsu as she kept Sakura wounds and the blood flow under control. As they slowly removed the weapons that were embedded in the wall, they quickly got her to the hospital as quick as possible. Having no idea who did this, Sakura was brought to the hospital as she was looked at by a better medic. However, they didn't know that someone was now in the village attacking their shinobis. Snevi was quickly alerted, but Sakura was unconscious and unable to recollect anything that happened to anyone. They would have to wait until she wake up. As for Sasuke, he was taken out of the village. When Sasuke came to, he found himself tied up, his arms that is. Look, he's awake, said Seikon. Who are you people? What the hell is going on, Sasuke said. As he was pissed off to be captured by these people, he was going to make them regret it. Sorry, but it had to be done, said Gorin as she stepped forward. We had to get you out of the village. Sasuke gaze narrowed. Why, he said. Our master, believe that it's time that you come with us. Your master? And who's that? Why, Orochimaru, of course. I see. So you're here to kidnap me? Yes, we did, but that was not our goal. However, we could not trust that you would not see the benefits of remaining in Kanoha. And we decided to give you the information out here, away from the village. So you brought me out here to convince me to return to Orochimaru. Do you really think I will accept anything from that snake? As Gorin narrowed her eyes, I will suggest you think this over before. You decide to push your luck farther than his already reach. As Sasuke snorted, When I get out of here, he said, I'm gonna make all of you pay. Huh, you're a cocky one, aren't you? said Kitamaru. I mean, you're tied up, surrounded by four people and yet you still believe that. You're capable of winning this. When you're dying at my feet, you're gonna realize the answer, Sasuke said. Yeah, you're one cocky shit. Before we have to fight, don't you need power? From what I'm able to recall, you seek power to kill your older brother Itachi Uchiha, if I'm not mistaken, said Gorin. Sasuke growled. Don't say that name, he said. Our lord seek to give you all the power you can obtain to kill Itachi. At that moment, Sasuke started to realize the position that he was in. It wasn't that he feared these people or anything, but... He remembered what that girl T.Y. said. As several thoughts popped into his mind right now. Several moves that he could make. This could also benefit him greatly as well. However, if he did this, the people of the Leaf would think that he's a traitor until he revealed his true intentions. However, he could get stronger. Strong enough to kill him. As Sasuke weighed his options, as he glanced up towards Gurin, Orochimaru can make me strong enough to face my brother, he said. 
Gorin was glad to hear him think it over. Yes, of course. Stronger than you can even believe. Our master has high hopes for you. It's up to you to come with us and gain. Strength to be able to face off against your brother or stay at the leaf and never get the chance of getting a revenge. They thought that Sasuke was chosen between Orochimaru and the leaf but that was not the case. If he played this right, everyone could get what they want. As Sasuke decided to go with his guts, fine he said. Gorin was glad to hear that. Well then she said as she looked towards Kitamaru on seal a barrel. What the hell is that Sasuke asked. As she smirked, time skip, as Naruto was called to the hospital by the Hokage herself, as Naruto wondered what was so urgent, arriving at the room Naruto saw, Sakura on the bed, her stomach and her shoulders bandaged up. As she saw him, Naruto noticed that Sineda and Shizune was in the room as well. What the hell is going on? Naruto walked over towards her. As he looked down towards Sakura, who did this Naruto asked. Sasuke was taken. What? said Naruto as he turned towards Nedi. As Sakura spoke up, he was taken by four people. I tried to stop them. They were too strong, Sakura said. Naruto clenched his fists. Sakura was one of his friends. She had proven herself when she had faced off against tough opponents that she could not take down but despite that she still fought against them. And for that, Naruto saw her as a worthy friend. And those people did this to you. Sakura nodded. You have to save him, Naruto, she said. It's Orochimaru people. They kidnap him. Don't you worry. All you have to do is rest, said Naruto. I'll find them. And I'll kill them all. As Naruto turned, wait, said Snedi. The reason I called you here was for you to get a mission. I have to hunt down these people first. Would you just listen up? That's a part of the mission, she said. I want you to gather a team at the moment. Majority of the high class nobis are out of the village on missions because of the recent invasion. That is why I want you to gather a team to hunt these people down and rescue Sasuke Uchiha. I can do this by myself. No, she said. There are four of them from the report that Sakura has given me. I'm not sending you solo, so gather a team. Quickly, time is of the essence. Fine, said Naruto. I'll gather a team. Get some trackers. You're gonna have to track them down, she said. They left a few hours ago, so time is of the essence. Don't worry, Sakura, said Naruto as he stopped at the door. I'm gonna bring Sasuke back. I promise. Sakura was still not 100% as she slipped unconscious. But there was a smile on her face as she knew that Naruto was on it. Everything was gonna be fine. But guys, it'll be ends so right here. If you wanna see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification. Say, posted. Remember, share all of your friends in social media platform. But I'm hoping to see you guys soon. Peace.